Spirituality is a really very personal thing, but I um I wanted to make this video because I noticed people are just like, you know, well, what is she? Well, she you know, she she does this, she does that, and my answer is, I mean, all I can really identify as is like African American spirituality, like whatever black people have done, chances are I do it. And when I say whatever we've done, I obviously don't mean every single thing, but you know, the the big things. So, uh, you know, as, as far as the genetics of black people, you know, we are, whether, whether you like it or not, I'm sorry, you know, we're Semitic, right? So I've definitely, you know, lit the menorah, I cleaned my house for Passover. I was raised as a very conservative Christian in the Church of God in Christ. So what does that mean? To this day, to empower myself, I sing gospel, Christian gospel music and Negro spirituals. It is something that gives me strength from my ancestors that I will never let go. Um, and, you know, in, in spite of whatever, I remember even when I converted to Islam. Oh, look, another, <laughs> another one. Uh, even when I converted to Islam, I mean, I still sung Negro spirituals because at the end of the day, like, you know, all you need is a foot stomp and a hand clap in your voice. You know, there, you know, no stringed instruments needed to, to sing from your soul. Now, of course, I spent, a, you know, maybe a decade as a very conservative Muslim, I even more than a qab uh, for... Uh, I want to say eight years. So when you see these pictures of these Muslim women with their faces covered on my channel, chances are it's just a photo of me. Um, so, you know, I still do, you know, Salah, Zakat, Siyam, Psalm, like basically the fasting and the praying. Um and charitable contributions that Muslims do. I still believe in um, the five pillars of Islam and the six tenets of faith. Um, these are not things I've let go. Buddhism. Okay, great. You know, something African-American people ended up doing in droves. You know, we all ended up going to here, there, and, and you know, East Asia. We all ended up going to Malaysia in the 70s and, you know, learning martial arts and bringing back wives and, you know, Vietnam, Korean War, like all these different things that affected us. So uh, Buddhism, I definitely have um, a Buddhist influence in my house. I remember me and my partner, um, I moved my room around in a very feng shui type of way. And um he was just like, you know, can you feel the difference? Like he even has like, I, I mean, it's just somewhere where we collide, right? With Buddhism, because he's, he's you know, his primary uh, source of faith is Christianity. And my par primary source of faith is, is basically Sufism. So um, definitely changing the energy flow and, and, you know, stoppages by adhering to feng shui, uh, which is a concept from Buddhism. Uh, let's see what else. I mean, um, I've definitely got to throw in, you know, root work, uh, hoodoo, um, and, and a lot of people get hoodoo and voodoo, uh, mixed up. I mean, Voodoo is like, you know, a religion that doesn't really require hoodoo, whereas hoodoo is a lot of root work. And um, I would liken it best to like um, people practicing the law of manifestation before they knew that it existed. OK, um, Sufi Muslims uh, spend a lot of time in the cemetery. Not all of, you know, not all of them, but definitely, you know, I come from the Ba'alawi Tariqa, you know, the headquarters of that is in Tarim, in the, in the Valley of Hadramaut, in a place in a country called Yemen. So, um, you know, we spent a lot of time in the cemetery with, you know, lots of ancestor veneration and um, connecting with the spirits of our ancestors and faith. So I connect with the ancestors of... Um, not just my ancestors in faith, but my ancestors in genetics, like, you know, my grandmother, great grandmother, great, 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 right? Like, uh, I don't forget. I'm, I'm very mindful of the dead and I don't neglect them. Um, so hence the different, you know, root work and shamanism and different things like that, curanderos, yada, yada, yada. Um, that's actually, I mean, I use that word curanderos very, uh, I could have just said shaman because I don't want to like come off like I'm culturally appropriating, you know, uh, Mexican uh, medicine men and women. But um, for me, that as a Spanish term is just kind of more uh, encompassing. So what else have I got going on? I definitely have um, a bit of a Hindi uh, influence. 
So, um, I'm not a polytheist by any means. Like, uh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, I, I believe in one source of creation, you know, one all powerful, almighty, uh, source, but, um, I believe in everything. If you ask me if I believe in monster, Slender Man, Loch Ness Monster, you know, monsters under the bed, in the closet, gins and ghouls and demons, the answer is yes, 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 yes. Do I believe in aliens? Do I believe in mermaids? Do I believe it? Yes. Yes. <laughs> and I act like it. So, um... You might see me, uh, because a lot of times, um, I'm from Seattle, so you go into these different Asian restaurants, right? You see the Buddha, right? You know, the laughing Buddha, the money Buddha, the like. But what people don't often notice is that when you walk into a lot of, especially Chinese establishments and Vietnamese establishments, there are altars <laughs> all over the place. I mean, you think you're just looking at decoration, right? You think you're just looking at, oh, you know, some Chinese characters and a, and a, and a Naga dragon, you know? But I'm like, oh, you know, like, like I, that means something to me. These dragons and egregores, they mean something to me. So um, just kind of silently, I acknowledge them. I acknowledge their existence because I believe that they exist. It doesn't, it doesn't make me part of their, you know, the faith system or spirit system. But like, if you ask me if I believe in it, I don't mean, when I say believe in it, I don't mean like subscribe to it, but I mean, do you believe that this is real? My answer would be yes. I mean, when people put these laughing and money uh, Buddhas, you know, in their businesses, it's like, well, why do they all do well? <laughs> Clearly, they're getting energy from somewhere because this little hole in the wall restaurant's got excellent food and they're doing very well, you know? Um, so, um I definitely use mantras. Uh, there are some mantras that help me more than others, uh, mudras that help me more than others. And um, I just am a very free spirit. And I'm also intensely sensitive. So part of my um, my spiritual experience is just as an individual, things that I've seen in my dreams, things that have happened, you know, I mean, my life to so many people is, you know, like a horror movie, you know, yeah, you, those people who get the blanket snatched off them in the middle of the night or, you know, see dark figures, you know, every now and then, you know, maybe not lately, but every now and then that's been, you know, that's been a thing, you know, communication from ancestors, you know, I've, um, I've been able to see and, and, and communicate with my grandmother after she passed on, you know, so I mean... I, I have very uh, strong faith. Um, so um, I'm not going to look like, you know, any believer, you know. I mean, there are plenty of Muslims. I mean, I could never go back to Saudi Arabia with the things that I've just said, because, you know, if I qualify to certain people as a witch, for example, I could very well get stoned to death on on the strength of this video alone so you know my umrah my my going to mecca and medina for holy reasons like uh, da, 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 da. that's that's a that's past tense <laughs> i'll probably never be back but i'm still going to pray i'm still going to put on my hijab and you know bow and prostrate like i'm going to worship in the best way that I know how. And um, one of the things that happens to people like me when you are such a seeker of knowledge is that you open up these rabbit holes and these cans of worms and these Pandora's boxes that will really overwhelm you if you're really digging in. Now, if you're just kind of a surface person, oh my God, you're going to be a know-it-all. You're going to be arrogant and just, you know, yada, yada, maybe even very rigid in your faith. And for some people, that is a very safe place. You know, that surety that that your path is the only way to God's pleasure and, and heaven and and whatever else you believe, you know, but, um, I have scratched the surfaces of so many different things. And I'm just like, I cannot delegitimize this. I do not know how to be honest with myself and call this a lie at the same time. So what am I going to do now that I have come upon this knowledge? I have to change. If I am to be a sincere person, I have to walk in what I understand to be true. 
And there are so many things all over the world that I have identified as true in terms of spiritual systems, in terms of Ayurvedic medicine and the Vedas and, and Islam and Christianity and, and you know, uh, just Lord. Um, <sighs> Buddhism, Hinduism, I mean, I mean there, there's a lot going on. You know, Taoism, um, Kung Fu as a way of life. Uh, it's not just a martial art, right? It's it's a way of life. Um, so um, I get this very uh, namaste energy, right? Like the God in me, the divine in me uh, rec- recognizes that in other places and other people and other religions and other spirits and other creation. So um, if you see me doing a lot, maybe, you know, there's an ancestor altar, you know, with, with a dedication. And then there's, you know, the hijab and the prayer and the recitation of the Quran and the quoting of biblical scriptures. It, it's, it's just what I do. It's just what I do. I am no proselytizer. I do not call people to my way, nor do I seek that people would be like me because I think I'm very much a... Uh, for a lot of people, a very much uh, throwaway believer because I, I believe in so much. Um, so um, you can basically take me anywhere. <laughs> you can take me to a church, a mosque, a temple, a, a self-realization temple, you know, some place they do puja, like you can just expect me to be on my best manners and know how to behave, you know, you can take me to a cemetery and and expect me to have some kind of a protocol when I'm there because of the studying of spirituality. Um, I've opened to myself doors that I, that I never intended to, but, uh, when knowledge hits you, you really have to adjust unless you're just, um, I mean, I, I, I don't have a word for it. I don't have a complete thought for it. But um, chanting has helped me. Mudras have, have helped me. The Islamic prayer, learning Arabic, reciting the Quran has helped me. Uh, verses that I practice as memory verses from the Bible, they have helped me. Feng Shui has helped me. So um, I give honor to where it's due and there are so many influences on my life where where honor is due truly especially as a person who has traveled globally who has had an international set of uh friends companions um so that's just a little bit about me so if you catch me you know <laughs> with let's say jenna hijab and you know <laughs> a mudra uh and 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 some kind of a namioho or om playing in the background like dude it, oh, it it it's just me yeah so with that being said um i hope that i have conveyed to you that all the major trends of religion uh and I do mean major. So there are obviously religions that I did not meet. Like 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 Sikhism, for example, has not just had a major influence on African Americans, right? As opposed to, you know, specifically the goddess Kali, right? She has, right? Um, so um, all of the major trends that have hit African Americans in terms of religion, belief, spirituality, uh, I have internalized them. Uh as an African-American. So part of that, you know, you get to some parts of Ifa, you get to some parts of Santeria, Burjaria, 21 Divisions, you get to some parts of uh, um, Congolese, you know, uh, hierarchies, uh, divisions of um, Lord have mercy and don't even get me started on, you know, Suleiman, alayhi salam, or, you know, people call him King Solomon. I mean, so there's a lot of, you know, demonolatry even as an influence because we know or believe that Solomon was a what? An African black man. So uh, anyhow, and we believe the same about Moses and Jesus and the entire family of Imran, right? 
as well as Hagar, who was the maidservant of Abraham, who became his wife, you know, consort to the point of giving birth to a child for him. So there is a lot of African influence there as well. Um, and the people that I've met in my life. So Somali women have, you know, empowered me with stories about, you know, Arwalo and, and Ayande and uh, the, the, these, these pre-Islamic things that existed in their culture. So um, I'm hit <laughs> by a lot of different things, okay? <laughs> so um, I mean the law of manifestation, right? So um, that being said, I really hold in high regard the spirituality of African Americans, and I'm very grateful to be one. I think one of the reasons that we have um, the music and the culture that is uh, embraced worldwide is because we have such an intense level of spirituality that what comes from our hearts speaks the same language of all hearts. There are people who barely, you know, speak English who can rap a full Tupac song, you know. There's something very powerful about the words of a Tupac and the words of a Stevie Wonder and the words of a Michael Jackson that really just get straight to the soul. And I'm part of that. Uh, it, it's a very rich, glorious tradition to be part of. And I just couldn't bear to to part with any of it. So um, I guess I could call what I experience as faith as a African-American spirituality, <laughs> uh, if you will. And if not, you know, that's cool, too. I just, I mean, with labels, good God, I mean, labels can be so inaccurate and, and, and so far reaching at the same time that they just uh, they just don't do, which is why I don't often um, identify with very many labels because so much and so little would apply. Um, so with that being said, I want to thank you for listening, and I hope that that is clear. And if it's not, just know that I did my best. So, um, I'm up at a unicorn. I want to thank you so much. And also, I do have a backup channel with my legal name. My, my, I was born Chocolate Angel. <laughs> So um, if you could subscribe to my backup, or not my, excuse me, it's not a backup channel. It is my other channel. I would appreciate that as well. Alrighty then. <laughs> wow. I was talking about Buddhism and just saw uh, Jim Carrey in my head teleporting, you know, using his, uh, alrighty then was his mantra. <laughs> uh, and now I have like Eddie Murphy in my head spinning the, uh, he's, I want the knife in the movie, The Golden Child. Anyhow, let me get out of here because I'm clearly rambling. Uh, I'm uppity and I'm out.